Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, we're going to be reading the story, The Merchant of Venice. This is an adaptation of the same play written by William Shakespeare, the famous English poet, playwright, and actor. William Shakespeare was a landmark among English poets. He is regarded as the greatest writer in the English language and the world's preeminent dramatist. He's often called the Bard of Avon. He has pl written 37 plays, 154 sonnets, two narrative poems, and a few other verses. His plays have been translated into every major living language and are performed more often than those of any other playwright. The Merchant of Venice is, na is classified as an early Shakespearean comedy. It is a story that tells the world that the divine quality of mercy is always better than justice. The play is about the aftermath of the rivalry between Shylock, the Jew, and Antonio, the young Christian merchant of Venice. Read on and find out how good finally triumphs over evil. The Merchant of Venice Antonio was a young and honest merchant in the town of Venice. He was the kindest man ever lived. He always came to the help of the people in trouble. He was greatly loved by all his fellow citizens. Antonio had an had a bosom friend, Bassanio. Bassanio was a noble Venetian. He was not very rich. He had lived a luxurious life and squandered all the little money he had. Whenever he wanted money, Antonio helped him. It seemed they had but one heart and one purse between them. Bassanio loved a girl named Portia, a very wealthy lady living in Belmont. Her father died some time ago and she was the only heiress to a large estate. Portia too loved Bassanio. Now he thought of improving his fortune by marrying her. One day Bassanio came to Antonio and told him about his love for Portia and that he must go very soon to Belmont as a suitor to Portia. But he did not have any money even to dress himself suitably as the lover of so rich an heiress. So he asked Antonio to help him. Bassanio wanted his friend to lend him 3,000 ducats. But it so happened that Antonio had spent all his money on his ships and so had no money with him. But he expected some of his ships to come home soon, laden with merchandise. Hence he decided to borrow the amount from Shylock, who was a moneylender. Shylock had become very rich by lending money at a very high interest to merchants. He was a hard-hearted man and was very severe with his customers, so he was much disliked by all good men. Antonio also disliked Shylock for being so ambitious and greedy for money. He used it to lend money to the needy people without taking any interest. Therefore, there was great enmity between the greedy Shylock and Antonio. Antonio and Bassanio went to Shylock. Antonio asked the Jew to lend the lend him 3,000 ducats at any interest. He would pay it back as soon as his ships returned from the, from the sea. Shylock thought deeply. He took this as a golden opportunity to take revenge on the Venetian who had insulted him many times. Yes, I will lend you the money and I will take no interest, said the greedy money lender. Antonio was surprised at this kind offer. Shylock still pretended to be generous. He again said, he would lend him the 3,000 ducats and take no interest for his money if repaid in time. His only condition was that Antonio should go with him to a lawyer and sign a bond in Marysport, stating that if he did not repay the money in time, he would forfeit a pound of flesh to be cut off from any part of his body. No, cried Bassanio, you shall run so no such risk for me. But... Antonio insisted that he would sign it, for he was sure that his ships would return with money before the day of payment. Antonio signed the bond and got the money which he handed over to Bassanio, who immediately set off to Belmont with a splendid train to possess Portia as his partner of life. When Bassanio arrived in Belmont, Portia was very worried whether he might be successful in the challenge raised by her father before his death in order to save his daughter from fortune hunters. He had arranged three caskets, gold, silver, and leaden, for his suitors to try. The person who chose the right casket in which her picture was deposited could win her. 
Bassanio did not choose either the gold or the silver casket. He said that things that glittered outside were often ugly inside. He then chose the leaden casket on which it was written, Whoever chooses me must risk all that he has. It was a moment of joy for everyone, because there was the lovely picture of Portia in it. Thus Bassanio proved successful in his suit, and Portia consented to marry him. Before the marriage, Bassanio confessed to Portia that he was not very rich. His high birth and noble ancestry was all that he could be proud of. Now when her turn came, Portia prettily said that she was an unschooled girl. She loved him for his good qualities. She had enough riches. I give them to you with this ring, said so. She presented a ring to Bassanio. Then a messenger arrived there. He was sent by Antonio. He had brought a letter from Antonio containing a sad news. When Bassanio read the letter, Portia found his face purple. She inquired what the sad news was. He replied, O oh, sweet Portia, here are a few of the most unpleasant words that have ever been written. He then told all about Antonio and about his strange bond with Shylock to help him. Antonio, Bassanio read Antonio's letter. Sweet Bassanio, my ships are all lost. My bond to the Jew is forfeited. In paying it, I shall lose my life. I wish to see you at my death, but it is your pleasure. Oh, my dear love, said Portia, be quick. You shall have gold to pay the money twenty times over before this kind friend Antonio shall lose a hair by my Bassanio's fault. Portia then said she would be married to Bassanio before he set out in order to give him a legal right to her money. The day of payment being passed, the cruel moneylender would not accept the money which Bassanio offered him. He insisted upon having a pound of Antonio's flesh. A day was fixed to try the strange case before the Duke of Venice, and Bassanio awaited in dreadful suspense and the result of the trial. The day of the trial arrived. Antonio did not ask for mercy, because he knew well that Shylock was unlikely to grant him any mercy. In a way, he was willing to accept punishment. At the court, the Duke himself pleaded with Shylock to be merciful. He bluntly refused. Bassanio offered the Jew twice the sum owed by Antonio, but he replied that he wanted justice, and so he would ask for his pound of flesh, even if he was offered six thousand times the amount. When the Duke asked Shylock how he could hope for mercy from God if he himself showed no mercy to his fellow beings, Shylock replied that he wanted no mercy if God grants him justice. So saying that, he began to sharpen the long knife. Portia, who had decided to come to Venice and to speak to in, in Antonio's defense, reached there on the day of the trial with her friend Nerissa. They disguised themselves. Portia appeared in a lawyer's gown, and Nerissa followed her as her clerk. The case was just going to be heard before the duke. Portia entered the High Court of Justice and presented a letter from Bellario, who was a lawyer and relative of Portia. In that letter, the learned counselor had written that the bearer of the letter, Balthasar, so he called Portia, could be permitted to plead for Antonio as he was sick and unable to come by himself. The Duke granted this, wondering at the youthful appearance of the stranger, who was well disguised in her counselor's robes and large wick. And now began the important trial. Portia looked around and saw the merciless moneylender. She saw Bassanio too, but he knew not in her disguise. She read the bond and turned towards Shylock and told him that he had the right to his pound of flesh. Hearing it, Shylock felt happy. She then spoke eloquently of the noble quality of mercy. It would have softened the hearts of all except that of Shylock. She said that mercy dropped as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. Mercy was a double blessing. It, it blessed him that gave and him that re received it. Great kings have always shown mercy. It was an attribute of God himself. She asked Shylock to remember that as we all prayed for mercy from God, we were bound to be merciful to our fellow beings. But Shylock insisted on getting the penalty stated in the bond. Is he not able to pay the money? asked the young lawyer Balthasar. Bassanio then offered him the 3,000 ducats as many over as he should desire. Yet Shylock refused it. He still insisted upon having a pound of Antonio's flesh. The young counselor now wanted Shylock to let her 
have a look at the bond once again. When she had read it, she said, This bond ha is forfeited, and by this the moneylender lawfully claims a pound of flesh to be cut off by him nearest Antonio's heart. Then he said to Shylock, Be merciful, take the money, and bid me tear the bond. But no mercy would the cruel Shylock show. He said, By my soul, I swear, no man can persuade me to change my mind. Now, Antonio, said Balthazar, you must prepare your bosom for the knife. While Shylock was sharpening the long knife and feeling its sharp edge, Balthazar asked Antonio, Have you got anything to say? Antonio calmly said, I have but little to say. I have prepared my mind to die. Then he turned over to Bassanio and said, Give me your hand, Bassanio. Fare you well. Grieve not that I had fallen into this misfortune for your sake. Tell my regards to your honorable wife and how I had loved you. In the deepest agony, Bassanio replied, Antonio, I am married to a wife who is as dear to me as life itself. But life itself, my wife, and all the world are not considered by me above your life. I am willing to lose it all. I would sacrifice everything to this devil here to, sh to save you. Shylock now cried out impatiently, We are wasting time. I pray pronounce the sentence. Every heart was full of grief for Antonio. As the judgment was going to be announced, the young lawyer asked Shylock if there were balances to weigh the flesh. Shylock said that he had them ready. The lawyer also asked him if he had called a doctor lest Antonio bleeds to death. Shylock said no and added that it was not written in the bond. Balthazar replied, It is not so named in the bond, but what of that? It was good if you did so much for the sake of charity. To this Shylock answered, I cannot find it. It is not in the bond. Then, said Balthazar, A pound of Antonio's flesh is yours. The law allows it, and the court awards it, and you may cut this flesh from off his sh chest. But this bond here gives you no drop of blood. The words clearly are a pound of flesh. If in cutting off the pound of flesh you shed one drop of Antonio's blood, your land and goods are by the law to be confiscated to the state of Venice. Hearing this, Shylock was totally confused. It was utterly impossible for Shylock to cut off the pound of flesh without shedding some of Antonio's blood. This wise discovery of Balthazar saved the life of Antonio. All admired the wonderful sagacity of the young counselor. Finding himself defeated in his cruel intent, Shylock said with a disappointed look that he was ready to take the money. Rejoiced beyond measure by Antonio's unexpected deliverance, Bassanio cried out, Here's the money! But Portia stopped him, saying, Slowly, there is no haste. The money lender shall have nothing but the penalty. Therefore, prepare, Shylock, cut off the flesh, but mind you, shed not a drop of blood. If you make a mistake, you are condemned by the laws of Venice to die, and all your wealth is forfeited to the state. Give me my money and let me go, said Shylock. I have it ready here, said Bassanio. Shylock was going to take the money. Portia again stopped him. Wait, I have yet another hold upon you. By the laws of Venice, your wealth is forfeited to the state for having conspired against the life of one of its citizens, and your life lies at the mercy of the duke. Therefore, down on your knees and ask him to pardon you. The duke then said to Shylock, You may see the difference of our belief in God. I pardon you your life before you ask it. Half of your wealth belongs to Antonio, the other half comes to the state. The duke now released Antonio and dismissed the court. He then highly praised the wisdom and ingenuity of the young counsellor and invited him home to dinner. But Portia, who meant to return to Belmont before her husband refused the invitation politely. When the duke left the court, Bassanio said to Balthazar, Most worthy gentlemen, I and my friend Antonio have been acquitted of grievous penalties by your wisdom, and I beg you to accept the three thousand ducats due to Shylock. But Portia was not ready to accept the money. Bassanio again pressed Balthazar to accept some reward. It came into Portia's mind 
to play a trick upon her husband. She said, Give me a ring. I will wear it for your sake. Bassanio was distressed when the counselor asked him the only thing he could not part with. He replied that he could not give him the ring because it was his wife's gift. He had promised her never to part with it. At this, Portia pretended to be offended and left the court. Dear Bassanio, said Antonio, let him have the ring. Let my love and the great service he had done for me be valued against your wife's displeasure. Ashamed to seem ungrateful, Bassanio yielded and sent the ring to Balthazar. Portia returned home happily, having performed a good action. At Belmont, she waited for her husband. When Bassanio arrived, accompanied by Antonio, his, her eyes immediately fell upon his empty fingers and she asked him about his wedding ring. I gave it to the lawyer who saved Antonio's life, Bassanio said. Hearing this, Portia looked very angry and reproached Bassanio. She said, No, you lie. You gave it to some other woman. He said with great earnestness, No, no woman had it. The young lawyer who refused 3,000 ducats of me begged for the ring. What could I do, sweet Portia? Hearing the quarrel between the couple, Antonio said, Ah, I am the unhappy cause of these quarrels. Portia consoled Antonio not to grieve. Then Antonio said, I once did lend my body for Bassanio's sake, but for him to whom your husband gave the ring, I should now have been dead. I swear your lord will never more break his word with you. Then you shall be his surety, said Portia to Antonio. Give him this ring and bid him keep it better than the other. So saying, she gave a ring to him. When Bassanio looked at the ring, he was strangely surprised to find it was the same he had given away. Then Portia told him how she had been the young counselor and Nerissa her clerk. Portia then gave him a letter which contained the happy message of Antonio's ships supposed to be lost safely arriving in the harbor. So the tragic beginnings of this rich merchant's story were all forgotten in this unexpected good fortune which followed. There was leisure to laugh at the comical adventure of the ring and also at the husband who did not know his own wife. Slightly adapted. And that's the end of this wonderful story. We hope you found it interesting. For more useful videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Brain Blitz Audios. Until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, bye bye for now.